Amen, amen, amen. I welcome you to the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I just truly, amen, thank God on today. Amen. This is, we're starting, amen, the YouTube channel and listen. And, and I'm, I, Lord's will, I promise I'm just going to talk and I'm going to try not to get excited. Uh, because I'm always excited about the word of God, especially when I'm reading about truth. Amen. It is exciting. Amen. To hear and know truth. Um, amen. So uh, again, I thank God for each of you. Amen. Um, I would like for you if, if this, if this channel, amen, has, has been a blessing to you on a continuum I would like for you to share, like, and subscribe, amen, to the voice of one crying out in the wilderness channel, amen. Um, again, um, as I said before, uh, what we're going to be going through is the book of Revelation, amen. We are in those end times now, as we speak, uh, many of us don't believe. Um, there's a lot of unbelief out there. And I'm not talking about the ones that have not accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. I'm talking about those, amen, that proclaim, amen, that they are saved and that they are part of God because they're speaking it with their mouth. But the actions is far beyond what's being spoken and testified through the mouth. The actions are totally different. Amen. But today, again, we're going to, amen, go through uh, the book of Revelation. We're going to start with the seven churches that John saw that God allowed him to see while he was on the island of Patmos by himself. But we're going to go into prayer. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, God, I ask, Lord, that you be upon this social media, which is YouTube, um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, whatever it may be, that it may touch the audience with their heart, and their mind and their soul, their spirit, Father, in the name of Jesus, let thy word be a blessing. Let the truth continue to pour out and someone get excited about the truth in the name of Jesus. And God praying as well that we move out the four criticals that you may move miracles upon the lives of thy people. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. A amen. Hold on just a minute. I'm going to uh, put my phone on. Uh, do not disturb at this moment. So we won't get any calls right now, okay? And like I say, I'm just... I'm just here. I'm just the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Amen. I'm, I'm not trying to be special. Well, yeah, I am special. I'm special to God. Amen. I may not be special to you, but I am totally, amen, special to God, especially, amen, when, when, when he reveals something to me, if I'm walking or when I'm walking in error, amen, and he show me where I don't walk, and, and amen, I say, Lord, and let me get it right when, I, when, I, when I'm up that next morning, and Lord, today I will walk in victory, and I will be an overcomer, glory to God, glory, so again, we're going to talk about the seven churches that are in Revelation now. John began to see in Revelation 1 and 20. <clears throat> the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand. Now this is actually Jesus 
talking to John, letting him know, I'm giving you the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand. And the seven golden candlesticks. So John want to know what did the stars represent and what did the candles represent. So Jesus not only showed him, but he also, that parable that he gave him, he also gave him the explanation, very explanatory, I meant very explanatory, to let John know, I'm giving it to you. Now, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Now, I don't need nobody to say I got an angel over my church because Jesus did not say that he's sending an angel over the church. God is the head of the church. He is the husband man. So I don't want nobody to take that concept and run with it another way. Now, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Now, the seven churches basically is not talking about physical churches. Now, the seven churches that's mentioned in Revelation is Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Those are the seven churches that it described in Revelation. But don't think that it's just a church that's in Ephesus that God was talking about that particular church in Ephesus. He didn't go over to a city called Smyrna and say, oh, I'm talking about just that church that's in Smyrna. Now, the, the mystery to these seven churches, as I read, and I'm not just trying not to get ahead of myself, but I'm going to explain as we go through each church. Now, we're not going to be able to go through every church on tonight, but we are going to start as of tonight. Amen. This is already recorded. You can always go back. You can always listen. You can always, get, always, always get your Bible. Get your glasses if you can't see a magnifying glass, and 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 get your your pen, pencil, or paper, and write some things down. And when you open up your Bible, Amen. And put a line through what you have read, and maybe you might want to make a little note. I mean, that's what I do. I like to make a little note when the Lord begin to show me something. Now, now also. What I want us to understand that the stars symbolizes in Revelation as angels is what the stars basically represent. Also known as messengers. If you notice now, uh, angels always came to give a message like Gabriel or Michael the Archangel. Now, I'm not finna get into what Michael did and what Gabriel did and who Gabriel fighting and all this. I'm not getting into that because that is not going to profit us to get into the kingdom of God. We'll be stuck on talking about Gabriel and Michael and, and, and get, forgetting the whole concept about how we must live. Amen. And this is why, amen. And I'm, I'm going to throw this in because somebody need to understand we're not to get into religion debating about this or about that, or, or God is black or he is blue or he is green. And, and the woman is not supposed to preach or teach. We're coming up with all of this garbage and it's not going to profit us into the kingdom of God. Well, some believe that a woman could preach, but she was supposed to be in the pulpit. And like I said before, 
the reason why Paul, see, we have to understand the reason why Paul began to speak to that church because women in that particular city over in the church within that body was unruly. That's what they were. They, I mean, they was just unruly. They was rude, rude women. I hope I'm saying that right. They was just rude, ruly women. You couldn't tame them. And they kept a lot of garbage going on as today. I mean, like I always say, uh, the game is the same. It's just the players that change. So the, the same thing that was going on then is happening here now. There is never nothing new under the sun that has not already taken place. Now, this is what Paul meant. For women to be honorable. Women are supposed to obey. Now I ain't say like a servant. Now don't get that twisted either. Okay. Not like a servant. But to be treated equal. But also the women must carry themselves. Like honorable godly women. Amen. Not showing I mean, women today uh, is showing their cleavage. I mean, you might as well, some women don't even need to wear clothes because, I mean, and I'm talking about within the walls of the body of Christ. Amen. They're wearing clothes like the world. And yet and still, G Jesus say, be ye holy for I am am holy yet and still he also says written it's not just the outward appearance it's the inside on what your heart is about because jesus is coming amen to judge what this heart amen because he know every intention and every motive and why we do things the way we do things but also Women must adorn themselves in modest apparel, not to look like the world. I can't tell the difference today who is really saved and who is not saved because of the outward appearance. Some women, they pose to be women of God. You got elders, you got even some pastors and prophetess and all these types of women, nails just as long as they fingers and got on so much makeup. I can't tell the difference. <laughs> Lord Jesus. It's hard to tell the difference. The world that is not saved cannot tell the difference of who is of God and who is not because of our appearance, because of our character. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm still sticking with the subject, okay? And all of this is going to uh, tie in together. And I'm not going to be before you long. You're, we're probably just going to get through maybe two, two, maybe three of the churches. But now, now the message is also which is the angels can be known as messengers which is pastors uh, teachers apostles prophets and evangelists can, is considered and can be considered Amen is a messenger because they work when they work under the anointing of God, they are working to reach out to bring in. That is our job. Our job is to preach the word out, to live that word in order to bring others within that fold. And I'm not talking about your church. I'm talking about within the body of Christ. I'm talking about heaven. I'm talking about we as men and women of God is supposed to be about snatching souls out of the fire. Now, glory to God. Now, now the first church is Ephesus and I'm, I'm just going to take my time and I'm going to explain in this hour 
We are already in this hour. We are already are upon judgment right now. Now listen, I'm not here to condemn and 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 do all this type of stuff. I'm just Amen. Ministering the word of God as God give it to me. Now, yes, as God's children, God wants to bless us. God wants us to have the riches of the land, but we cannot have it because we not are on one accord. We are not in a unit. And it's just about me, myself, and I, and what I can get. It's what it's about. God will bless an individual. Amen. You're supposed to take some of your money or some of your substance that God has blessed you with. And you are supposed to be blessing your other brother and sister. This is is the way it was designed in the body of Christ. This is why Ananias and Sapphira died. The money was sup supposed to be used to distribute throughout the body of Christ. So when Ananias and Sapphira lied, the, each person that had money, that had wealth, that had substance was supposed to sell or give up something that they had and come and lay everything that they sold down at the apostles' feet. Now, some of these prophets and apostles, I have to say this here, they use that as a gimmick to come and bring money and put it to my feet. So you can what? Pocket yourself. And then as soon as you get the money, then you finna go wine and dine. Sally Mae. No. Glory to God. But the money was used. And deacons. Deacons that was full of the Holy Ghost. Because Paul said, listen, we don't have time. With this money situation, let's appoint men that's full of the Holy Ghost. That money was to be distributed to every man and his family as they had need. So therefore, when God blessed Israel, all of Israel was blessed. It wasn't just one. Amen. Joseph even did not think about himself. Even after he was sold by his brother, he was persecuted. He was lied on. He was lied about. And when he became, huh, and had the substance over everything, what did he do? He called for Israel to come and see him and gave to Israel. It wasn't just to his, his daddy now, but it was to Israel. They had sheep, they had oxen, and so forth. So this is why, amen, we were designed here to be helpers one to another under the purpose of God. This is why we are here. For his purpose. Now, also, let's go here to Ephesus. Now, all right. Now, Ephesus basically received an evaluation directly from God through Jesus Christ. Amen our Lord and our Savior. Glory to God. I want to get to that because I don't want to just uh, just say some things. Amen. But um, I'm going to have to uh, glory to God. Get that. But now, here we have it. Ephesus was basically cold in love. And, and, and I, I want you all to hold on just for a second. Um, I'm going to be right back. Amen. And you can also hear me. And I am going to read. Amen. That scripture. Because I, I hate to just just go anywhere. Do anything. Amen. Uh, without that scripture. Amen. Glory to God. So just bear with me. Uh, one second. Amen. Uh, I could take you to a commercial. 
but um, that's okay. Uh, okay, just here I am, and I'm going to uh, read that scripture now. Basically, oh, praise God, amen, amen, it's, 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 it's here. Um, okay, just bear with me here. Okay, I'm still here. Just uh, bear with me here. Okay, now, to the church of Ephesus, he began to write, "This, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. Now, Jesus is saying, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how you cannot stand them which are evil. And you have tried them which say that they are apostles and are not, or pastors or evangelists or whomsoever, and you have found them to be liars. And you have borne, you have patience for the sake of our Lord and Jesus Christ. You have labored and you have not fainted. But nevertheless, I have someone against thee because you have left your first love. You have fallen is what God is saying to the body of Christ. That type of characteristic of people. Oh, we and I, I know some folks like that today. Amen. Uh, uh, they 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 speak in, in a good tongue. Uh, uh, he coming outside and Chevrolet Chevrolet and church church church. Uh, they speak in a tongue. Uh, they fast and and uh, when somebody coming in the church or uh, to preach or uh, share the word of God. Uh, amen. That they want to see if this person is of God and is not, but. They don't have love in their heart. Anytime you do not have love in your heart, it's no way on God green earth that you can love God because you do not have love in your heart because God is love. And that love, the word itself, even the American dictionary defines with the definition that love is an action word. It is a verb. It's not just a noun. It does not just sit. It is a verb. It provides action. And coming on a Honda and Chevrolet, Chevrolet, that's not love. Glory to God. Now. That is to that characteristic of a person. Not just to that church in Ephesus. It was not to the apostolic faith. It wasn't just to holiness. It was not to just AME. It was not just to the Baptist. The body of Christ is getting judged those who have that characteristic of that person. When you carry those characteristics, that's who you are. You are just like Ephesus. Amen. You, you go to church. You put in your tithe. Oh, you make sure you give. Uh, uh, you give your offering. You be to church on time. You label, you you sip the cup of the wine on the first Sunday. Uh, 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 you eat the bread. Now, I don't know if some of y'all wash feet or not, but listen here. You are supposed to wash feet. Now, God is no, 
he know what he's saying. Now, some people out there saying, well, we don't have to do all that. Well, that's why you're really in the shape that you in now and have not came up to another level. Now, half of you are up to a level, another level because you have put yourself up there or man has put you up there and you have not caught up in the spiritual world in the eyes of God for that calling. Come on, somebody, I need somebody to understand what I'm saying. This is teaching, and this is not happening today. There is no, not too many people teaching. And at the same time, they're not living it. You got a lot of preaching. You got a lot of laying out. You got a lot of laying on hand. You got a lot of speaking in tongues. You got a lot of people throwing handkerchiefs and, and, and all kind of things going on in the body of Christ but you have to have love love worketh patience and gentleness so basically Ephesus they got well let me just stop saying Ephesus but no I'm going to say Ephesus but those with those characteristics of people, right now, judgment is here to give a spiritual evaluation that if you have those type of characteristics, you are cold in love. Listen, there are many today, many today, that is walking cold in love. You're putting on what they call a performance. If you, boy, then some of y'all put on a good performance. I tell you, you need to be, uh, I mean, on, on movie theater because you can put on a good performance. Like, like you, you really love people. You get people coming inside the church and you can't greet people with love. You're sitting up, uh, like you done, uh, ate. About 15 lemons, your your mouth look bitter and sour, your eyes scrunchy, like you done been drinking something all night long and ain't nothing right on you. You're not basically showing the love of God. And you're sitting up mean because somebody got called to do something and you didn't. Oh, Lord, help us, Lord, help us in that area. Now, I'm not going to be able to finish to another church but listen a characteristic of a person now next we're going to go with Smyrna we're going to go with that particular characteristic of people we now are already and I can't stop saying it we are now already are under the judgment of God and you know I when when I do pray I like to ask the Lord Lord judge me now that I be not judged during that time when I have to stand before you so spiritually we are being judged right now even as I speak on a spiritual aspect, we are being judged right now. Right now, we're being judged. But listen, I want to say this here. We are supposed to have everything as God's people. Do you know the only persecution that we're supposed to be going through? We're supposed to be going through uh, persecution by the adversary like Jesus did died for preaching the gospel, dying for having the faith, dying for holding on, like our fellow brothers and sisters did in the days of old. They were they died. They were martyred. Their heads were cut off for preaching the gospel. Not about a different religion, not about a denomination, not about a formality, not about a religion or culture. But it was about preaching the unadulterated gospel and living according to the word. God is just waiting on us. It's right there. It's in the middle between heaven and earth. And it's, it's just right there. When we begin to 
examine ourselves and get things right with God, that flow of that blessing is coming. Some have already gotten it, not doing what God told them to do. It's, they're not going to have it long. All You know, God know how to take money. Listen, I, I'm going to just say this here. You know, uh, as a babe in Christ, coming up in the Lord, I did not want to pay no tithe. I say, what? I done made eight hundred and something dollars, and you mean to tell me I got to, I got to give God eighty dollars? I was always taught to give from the gross, the gross, however you want to say it, and not the net. Amen. I say, uh, uh. So I ease. I, I was. I did want to analyze the sapphire number. Uh, instead of giving putting eighty in my time, I done stuck in about two hundred dollars, and I'm already looking at what I could do with the other sixty. Mm, mm, mm. What and my offering was about three dollars. Okay, so then I turn around, and everything could go wrong. Everything went wrong. I mean, I I end up spending money. I spent more than what I was supposed. Money just left. I mean, it it was like the chap before the wind. Whew, it just went away. I said, I just had this yesterday. That money was gone. I learned then to pay my tithes. I had to ask God to forgive me, Lord. From here on, I'm paying my full tithing. By my gross, and I'm gonna give an offering. I'm not planting a seed because there is no such thing as planting money as a seed. Now, I, I, I don't want to open, I, I, I can get to it now. There is no such thing as planting a seed with money, that is not biblical, that comes from man. The seed that Jesus talked about basically was the word. That is the seed. And planting that seed on good ground, that is preaching the gospel to people. And the word is going to fall on somebody that will receive it and live it. Then again, it'll fall to somebody that'll receive it and rejoice when they hear it. But soon as they go through trials and tribulation, they right back in the world. So if you somewhere and somebody telling you to sow a seed, don't sow no seed because there's no such thing as sowing a seed. Now, what you can do is you can give an offering. Now, you can do that. But not plant no seed. Now, God speak to your heart to give, then give. Obey the spirit of the Lord. And don't let man come up telling you and somebody, y'all out there, somebody got $500. God talking to you right now to send that to me. Uh-uh. No. I'm quite sure a lot of people have money. A lot don't have $500, but somebody got it. Amen. We, You have to understand the gimmicks that's going on out here. But I don't want to get to that. Because that's something else to get into. But what I want to say. Is obey. The spirit of God. And we are here. To be as one. Now. Next. Week. Or maybe this week, whatever the Lord say. It's just a segment, a sequel. Or however you want to say it, we're going through Revelation. And we're going to talk about today and where we are today in this time. Listen, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. If this channel of the voice of one crying out in the wilderness have been a blessing to you by and through the grace of God. I'm going to go in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word on today. Father, we cannot live without your word. It is written, man cannot live by bread alone, but by the word of God. And Father, right now, I thank you for your word that's bringing food to our soul right now in Jesus' name. 
Glory to God. Amen. God bless you and I thank you. Amen. And we're going to look forward. Amen. To see you again. God bless you.